Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Rotisserie Holiday Turkey. Today we're going to be cooking up two turkeys and we're cooking them whole on the spit, rotisserie style on the Kamado Joe using the Jotisserie attachment. But before we can get to any of that, we got to get these birds in the brine. We're going to be brining these birds with the Sweetwater Spice Lemon Thyme Turkey Bath. And this has got those great holiday herb flavors as well as a bright citrus thing going on that I really like. We're gonna start by doing just this one bottle into a gallon of water. We'll kind of mix that around. And of course this concentrate, it's pretty thick and kind of stuck to the glass, but I don't wanna waste this stuff. So I'm gonna go get some water to rinse this out. So we'll get all that goodness in there. And then we need to add to that a half cup of kosher salt. Just give this a good whisk to dissolve the salt. So I've got a couple of 10 pound birds that we're working with today. We really don't need to do any trimming on these to get started. We're just gonna put them here in our briner bucket and then pour the brine over the top. And as you can see, that one bottle of the sweet water with the gallon of water is going to be just about right to get these covered. So at this point, I'm going to lock this plate in place to keep the birds submerged. We'll cover this up, throw it into the fridge. It needs to go an hour per pound for each of those birds. So 10 hours, but we're just going to call it overnight. Today we're cooking on the Kamado Joe Big Joe and we're utilizing the Jotisserie attachment. First thing we need to do is get our charcoal going. Well, as you can see, we've got our charcoal banked to the back side of the grill. So we're really gonna be looking for the heat to come up this way as our bird spins on top of it. So we'll throw a couple starters in here and just leave this open for now while the charcoal gets hot. We've had the turkeys in the brine overnight. It's time to pull them out and get them seasoned up. I'm gonna do just a little bit of trimming here. We don't need like this big old nugget on the tail here. You can snip that off with your shears. I am gonna leave a little bit of this excess skin up here to make sure that we get this fully closed in, but we can trim that later after it's cooked. All right, so just any kind of that extra stringy stuff that we're definitely not gonna eat in the end anyway, we'll get rid of that. At this point, I think we're ready to get our seasoning going. Now we are cooking these birds whole, just like they are here intact today. Um, and that makes it a little bit more difficult to get some seasoning onto the flesh, but what you can do is gently work the skin back off the breast. Be careful not to rip it. You do want it to stay intact on top of the breast. We're just gonna pull that back and now we've got all this meat here exposed that we can get our seasoning right there. And for the seasoning, we will be using the Cattleman's Grill Ranchero. This is a poultry seasoning that uh, Cattleman's worked with me to develop last year over the holidays and it's become my favorite go-to turkey rub. Lots of savory flavors, more garlic than salt, which is fantastic for my taste. So cover that right back up. And then we're gonna look at getting down here onto these legs. So you can actually expose just a little bit of that flesh there on the legs and thighs just to Really try and get the seasoning in anywhere you can. Now we're also going to get into that neck cavity. Get some seasoning down there on the top side of the breast. Kind of shake it in and work it around. I'm also going to put together some little herb bundles that we can stuff underneath the skin. So we've got some of our favorite holiday herbs here thyme, rosemary, and sage. So we're gonna put one bundle right here in the cavity. And then we'll kind of split the rest along the sides of these thighs here. Now they're easily accessible, so when the bird's done, you can pull those right out before serving. Slide those right in there. As we truss this bird up, That'll all just be stuck in there and that aroma will kind of fill the cavity. And of course, we don't want to forget to season the outside of the bird, both for flavor and for color. 
We're first going to do this loose and then we're going to truss these guys up so that they stay nice and tight and compact, cook evenly on the grill. And we may need to do a little bit more seasoning after we do our handling and our trussing, which is fine. But we want to make sure we get some of these crevices, some of these hard to reach spots before this bird gets all compact. All right, that well, looks pretty good for now. So starting in the center of the twine, we cross the turkey legs over and tie a knot. Then we split directions. One goes up the breastbone, one goes around the cavity, and up the backbone. And they meet right here where the wings meet the back. And then twist across right here next to the wings. Wrap those around. Pull it snug to hold the wings in place and tie it off. Now we'll just touch up the seasoning on the outside. And these are ready to go onto the spit rod. All right, so we've got our birds positioned. Breasts in the center here. We're gonna go straight through both body cavities. And we're gonna leave a little bit more room on the blunt end here, which slides into the motor that turns it. And we'll slide our forks into place. Really important that we have a good grip on these so they don't go spinning on us. You want to spin it just right to make sure you get the best fit possible. Nice, I like that. Cinch it down. There we have it. Staying in place. We're ready to go to the grill. We're ready to load up the Joe Tisserie with the turkeys, but before we do that, we're gonna get a little bit of wood in here. So our, our charcoal fire is nice and hot. We've stabilized it about 300 degrees in there, which is what we're looking to cook at. And then we're gonna add some wood chunks, some nice big fist-sized wood chunks of apple wood today, which should help give the bird a nice golden brown color. And I think it's gonna go really nice with that lemon herb brine that we put on there. We're just gonna nestle these right into the hot coals. And then just within a minute there, you see we're getting some really nice smoke coming off those apple chunks. Let's get the turkeys loaded up. Well, that's pretty nice work. We're pretty close to center. Probably could come this way just a touch, but not far off. All right, so we flip on the motor. We let that mighty little motor do its work. We're gonna close this thing up. The smoke should clean up with the airflow. And then we're going to make sure that it just stays right in that 300 range, checking back on it every 30 minutes or so to make sure everything's looking good. We're about an hour and a half into this cook. I want to show you guys how the color is progressing on the outside of the birds. And also you'll notice as these proteins shrink up a little bit, there's a little bit more room for movement. So we're going to tighten everything down once again. So you'll notice they're kind of moving a little bit now as they've shrunk up and they've turned just a little bit on us, which is fine, but I'm going to shut this motor off for just a second here. So just going to loosen this up a little bit and kind of cinch these back together and then tighten them once again. And 
it's no big deal if those come loose every once in a while because we can make that adjustment. I kind of like how these have moved and fit together a little bit nice, a little bit better than they did initially. So we're going to leave them just like that. about 130 on the internal on this breast 134 so those are sticking pretty close maybe just about 10 degrees higher in the dark meat which is perfect that's how we want it to progress we're shooting for an internal temperature of about 155 to 160 in the white meat about 170 or higher in the dark meat so we're just going to let this ride for now it's doing great work we're getting really pretty e even browning coming off of the charcoal. And now we're seeing some of these fats dripping off, hitting the hot surfaces and coming back up in the form of flavor. I'm gonna close up the lid. We'll check on this in another 20 or 30 minutes. Well, here we are about three hours in now. We've been taking some temperatures here. Past 155 in the breast. We're looking for nothing cooler than 160 on these turkeys. But just look at this beautiful color on these birds. And they smell just incredible. There's gonna be plenty of smoke on these. I'm excited to check out our seasonings together. So we'll slide this fork off here. And the spit ought to pull out really easy. Look at those beautiful birds. Incredible color, incredible aroma. They need a little bit of time to rest before we can slice into them. So like I said, that was just about three hours of total cook time. That's three hours and we've got 20 pounds of turkey that's ready to go. You're never gonna get that with a giant bird, which is one of the reasons that I really like cooking two smaller birds as opposed to one giant bird. These younger, more tender birds that cook way faster. So if you're cooking on the Big Joe, skip that 24 pound bird and throw a couple of 10 to 12 pound birds on there instead. If you're cooking on something like the Classic Joe, 15, 16 pound bird is ideal. And with just a couple, two, three hour cook time, you got all day to cook all the birds you want. We've given the turkeys about 20 minutes to rest so that juices can redistribute. At this point, I want to jump into exactly how I would carve these up for serving. All right, we're going to drop our bird right here on our J.K. Adams cutting board, which, as you can see, is specifically designed to hold a turkey while you carve it. First thing we got to do is get rid of this twine. And then, as you recall, we've got a lot of herbs stuffed inside of here, so we're going to pull those out before we start slicing. And if you miss some right now, don't worry about it. As you're taking the bird apart, you can pull some more out of there. I'm gonna start by taking this wing off right here so I can get access to the thighs and legs. You're just looking for a joint. It wants to pull away on its own. You just kinda of gotta help it to cut around it. Next, we'll move on over here. Right next to the leg, we're gonna cut right along the side of the breast and straight down. And again, there's a joint down here where these things are connected and you just want to cut right through it. Comes apart really easy. As far as the leg and the thigh, again, just follow right down to the joint. As you pull them apart, you'll see that joint exposed right there and cut right through there. There you go. Now we're just going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Cutting right around the joint to release the wing, which opens up all kinds of space for us to get in between the thigh and the rib cage. And again, we're going to pop that joint. See it right there? Cut right through there. Super easy. Again, to separate the thigh from the leg, right in between the two. 
Look for the joint. Cut in between. Now for the breast, if you'd like to slice them right off of here, you can do that. But what you're gonna wanna do is remove the wishbone that sits right here in this V. So you're gonna take your knife right at the top of that V and work your way out. Same thing on this side, that bone is right at the edge, so just slip it right behind the bone and work to the edge. So you can pop that out to expose the wishbone there. Just give it a little tug. There you have it. So at this point now you can go ahead and carve slices right off the breast without running into that wishbone. And you'll work your way all the way until you get to that breastbone in between the two. Now your other option is to remove the whole breast before slicing it, in which case you're going to want to find the breastbone. It's that really hard piece of cartilage and bone right there in the center. And cut down just right along the side of it. So you're just going to follow the rib cage at this point. And you guys can kind of see that down here. This is the rib cage. And you're leaving as much meat on that breast as you can while separating it from the carcass. And there you have your turkey breast. Then you can take your whole turkey breast, get a nice sharp slicer, and cut that into nice thin slices. Oh my gosh, guys, that is so tender and juicy. I love the smoke flavor coming off of that Kamado Joe and the savory flavors are working great together. Such a fantastic rub, works really well with the citrus and the brine. And all of those things working together really create what I would consider to be the ideal holiday bird. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all of the products featured in today's video as always. And if you haven't yet, Head over there and sign up for our weekly emails. We've got a ton of great holiday information coming out in those emails. And just in case I don't say it enough, I appreciate you guys so much. I'm thankful for you for watching every week. You guys mean so much to us and you're the reason why we keep doing this. If you enjoyed the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to thesauce.atbbq.com. All things barbecue where barbecue legends are made.